Welcome boys and squirrels, ladies and gentle folks, theys and thems to the channel. My name is Kratos and this is Project Ember. In this brand new series on the channel, I'll be going through the mod hack slash balance patch for Fire Emblem 6, The Binding Blade, that being the pretty well-known Project Ember. So this balance patch, let's call it a ROM hack, was developed by a modder named Brunhilde. And it's it's been around since I think almost 2019, and I think the last update came around 2021. So it's been around for a while. It's pretty well known, I feel, in the community. But I've never played any form of ROM hack or balance patches of Fire Emblem in general. So I thought, why not start with Project Ember? I looked online; it looked pretty cool, looked pretty sick, and uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, I thought it was a pretty good idea. The reasons behind this playthrough are pretty simple. I want to showcase more of the modding community on my channel, more of the ROM hacking community and the Fire Emblem community, because I've been slowly dabbling, looking around in it, and there's a lot of very interesting projects, and I thought that making Let's Plays on them could be a lot of fun. The second reason is simply because I want to refresh my knowledge of FE6. It's been six or seven years since I last played this game, and I always have a fun time playing it and i am aware that in this rum hack they've added a couple of story things i know in the maybe in a couple of cutscenes here and there and i thought instead of playing the same old game that we've played let's give ourselves a brand new experience and try something new and also it allows me to give you guys a weekly series on the channel so this should be coming out every thursday on the channel so quickly before we get in there this rum hack has a ton of changes a lot of balance changes a lot of visuals changes so there's a bunch of things that are going to go into it i will try to break them down as i go from what i remember i don't remember everything so if i miss anything let me know in the comment section below but i'll be trying to go through a couple of the changes as we do the playthrough because this is as much a let's play as kind of a feature so as we go through the game I'll show a case as many things as I can. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So the first apparent thing is the screen, which is instead of being blue is red, which I think is a very nice little addition. I think it looks very clean, very good start. So let's go here. The menus kind of look the same, but as you'll see here down here, I have normal or maniac mode. So uh, this game was developed with normal, well, with maniac and hard mode in mind. It was not balanced for normal mode at all. That's what they say on the page. Also, there will be a link in the comment and in the pin, uh, well, in the description and the pin comment to this. So go check it out if you want to play along or uh, just do a whole playthrough yourself or just check it out, you know? Support the developers of this. They, they, they've worked really hard on it. So yeah, it was developed for hard and maniac mode. Maniac mode is a harder difficulty they added to be more in line with the, I think the GBA, uh, not the GBA, the DS versions of Fire Emblem. And there's also a hard mode. I decided to try maniac mode. I was like, let's just go all in if we play. Let's have a lot of fun and go with the hardest mode. It was not, however, balanced for normal. So maybe certain things won't work as well in normal or it'll just be way too easy in normal. So it's really recommended that if you want to play the easiest, quote, quote unquote, easiest difficulty, go with hard mode. Make yourself a favor. But if you want to give yourself a challenge like I'm going to do, let's go maniac mode in here and let's start chapter one dawn of destiny also as you can see below me there's a box empty that's where i'm gonna put my dead unit i'll be talk more about that in a minute man and drag dragon wants to coexist in harmony however man shattered the harmony with a sudden onslaught a great war known as the Cor scorching was fought for dominion of the land losses were tremendous for both sides and this war was the very laws of nature itself were twisted and disordered bringing chaos and an ease defeating the humble the dragons disappeared from the realm mankind then began to rebuild and repopulate their newly won land a million millennium has passed since then dun, 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 dun. but yeah the box below is where i'm gonna put my dead units well not the box the empty space below so i will not be doing really an iron man of this i'll just be kind of playing it by ear uh if a unit dies on a map i will not necessarily reset but if it's like an onslaught it's like half of my army i will do a reset it's i'll be playing it by by judgment i'll be trying to be as faithful as possible to a first time Fire Emblem experience where you should play the game as quote unquote intended. I'll also read through every single dialogue and everything just because I want to get myself a really good refresher and it, it, it allows a more complete let's play, let's play experience in my opinion. After defeating the dragons, the humans of Ellaby quickly spread their culture and civilizations to the farthest reaches of the continent. By the way, if I get any of these names wrong, correct me. I've always read them. I've never pronounced them out loud or very rarely. Therefore, I may be mispronouncing a lot of things. So let me know in the comments. In the west lies the kingdom of Etrusia, which is widely considered to possess the most refined culture in all of Ellaby. The kingdom of Bern, with its powerful military and logical pragmatic people, is located to the other side of the continent, in the east. These are the two most powerful nations in Ellaby, with, their, with the weaker nations situated between them. These smaller lands are the Lyce Lycian League, Lycian, Lycian, I think it's Lycian League, whose numerous territories are independently ruled by a number of marquees that are bound by a vow of allegiance. Ilia, where the people are arduously tilled the frozen soil 
and many become mercenary to earn money to survive. Sakai, where the various clans ride through the plains on horseback. I love Sakai. I always loved Sakai as like a, the Nomad Nation. I thought it was really cool. Although there were, un, were occasional clashes between these nations, the majority of the people of Ellaby lived in peace. The pe that peace, however, was not the last. King Zephiel of Bern has commanded his forces to conquer the entirety of Ellaby. Elib? Is it Elib or Ellaby? Maybe it's Elib. Elib sounds a little bit better, actually. Ellaby? Elib? Let me know. Burn's army first attacks Sakai and Lealusely massacring all who oppose them. Now Burn is mounting a merciless invasion into Lycia. Lycia? Lycia maybe? Lycia? Lycia? Lycia sounds weird. Sounds odd. Lycian? Lycian? Lycia? Let me know. Farah is a territory of Lycia, known for its beauty and honorable, honorable lords. Farah's lord Roy was in Ostia, Lycia, Lycia's largest territory where the invasion began. He had been sent to study to become the next Marquis of, uh, of the Farah territory. However, the, the, the Sing Marquis and Roy's father, Eliwood, has been Hill. It sent for Roy to return to lead Farah's soldier in defe defending against Burn. Marquis Hector of Ostia led the council of lord in Lycia. At the same time, Eliwood sent for Roy. Marquis Ostia's daughter, Lilina, 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 was in Farah visiting Eliwood, who is Marquis Ostia's longtime friend and confidant. They are best buddies. Upon receiving his father's message, Roy er, hurries Rome, taking with him his vassal and Bors, a knight from Ostia, who is responsible for Lelina's safety. The story begins with Roy reaches the outskirt of Pharaoh. As you guys might have been seeing with the sprites, uh, here there's already very clear differences between some of the looks. I'll highlight them a little later as I highlight every unit and their differences. And even just the, the portraits, I mean, but just the sprite of the fighter looks different here. Bosh! They've all hidden themselves inside the castle! <laughs> Even Elliot, the greatest knight in Lycia, is no match for an illness, it seems. <laughs> you were right when you said there wouldn't be many soldiers. They're all getting ready to defend against Spurn. Of course, I was right. I'm always right, you fool. But reinforcements could be here any minute. All right, you curs, listen up. Kill everyone in the castle while we still got time. Then we can waltz out of here with all the loot. You guys like my voice acting? Uh, by the way, it will be very inconsistent. I will change voices all around. I am very bad at keeping the same voice for one character. <laughs> Castle ain't only place for loot. Let's go ransack the villages and take everything they got. Hopefully you can enjoy this voice acting. Because it's, it's going to be all over the place. Lord Elliewood, we're under attack by bandits from Mount Bolm. I understand. Thank you, Merlinus. Blast it. We're... I'm not in this pitiful state. I would take care of them all myself. Lord Elliewood, Little Enum, you must hide yourself. This castle is going to become a war zone. No, my lord, I can fight too. Don't be absurd. I couldn't face Hector if something happened to you in my own castle. My father, but it's going to be all right. Roy should be here any moment, so we should just need to hold our own until then. He'll drive off, He'll drive off these dastards. Merliness, send a messenger to Roy to let him know of the current situation. We need his help. Y yes, my lord. My lord. Not my lord, it's my lord, technically. But just the uh, on-map sprite look different. Look, the archer up there looks very nice. Oh, I can't wait to get a closer look at all of this. Oh, look at them. Look at the, look at the Arbor Knight. Okay, we're going to talk about this in a second. Oh, it's Lance. What's the matter? Why are you in such a hurry? Lord Roy, bandits have appeared and are attacking the castle as we speak. No, it's Marquis. Un is the Marquis unharmed? He's inside defending against the bandit attack. But I don't know how long he can last with his illness. Excuse me, Lance. Is it? Is Lady Lilina safe? You must be a knight of Ostia. Lady Lilina's in the castle. She should be all right. She's a Lord Hollywood, after all, but he can't last forever. No, I shouldn't have let Lilina go to the castle before me. Lord Roy, regret won't solve anything. We must protect the castle. Walt is right. We must make haste. That's not Marcus' voice. That's not the right voice. I'll fix that later. <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is not time to despair. Very well to arms, then. Our target is the castle. We must re res rescue everyone. All right. So first of all, I want to take a quick look at the on-map sprites. They are insane. Look at this armor knight. It looks so cool. Look at Roy's. It looks so cool. Lance, Alan, Walt, Marcus. Look, look at the paladin with the, like, just the yellow highlights. It looks fantastical. Uh, it's just the Cavalier ship. Looks very, very neat. Very nice. I am happy with this so far. We'll take a closer look at each of these units and their differences right now. All right, so here we're going to take a quick dip in the gameplay and take a minute to look at the unit analysis. So we're going to be going through every unit that we just got in this chapter and kind of take a look at how they differ from their regular counterpart in the game. So on the left, you have the Project Ember version. And on the right, you're going to find the regular vanilla game version. And let's start by the look of it. I really really like the look of project ember overall but also just in terms of the portrait i think they did such a good job with harder darker lines around the characters and just deeper colors in general and like deeper shadows 
Roy's hair just looks so much better here. And I think just also the cape being just blue. Roy, our boy, looks very nice. So in terms of stats here, you can see that Roy starts at level 1 in both cases. But he'll have a boost of 3 in HP, 2 in strength, 2 in skill, 2 in speed. The same for luck, the same for defense, and a plus 4 in resistance. We're also going to be looking at the exact same constitution. But a big thing here that looks really cool, in my opinion, is the 7 base movement for Roy. That's kind of huge starting at 7 movement for a non-cavalry unit. It does really help just movement on the map and makes him a little bit more viable in terms of survivability and map control. But he does get some nice spreads on just base stats overall that are just nice, just making him a little stronger. Not too strong, but, you know, not as weak as he starts off normally. In terms of growths, we see a 5% increase in HP, a 15% increase in power or strength, the same exact skill, 20 plus percent in speed. This one is huge. Exact same luck plus 5% in defense and exact same resistance growth. So those are very significant. I don't think Roy is necessarily a bad Lord unit in his base stance, but just adding that extra strength and that extra speed does really put him up as a really strong unit here I feel. He doesn't get a lot of increases on the luck defense res side just a single 5% in defense but it's not like it's the type of character that needs it or warrants it. He needs to have downsides. The devs increase the speed and they increase the power a lot that's where the two main focuses are and it makes him just a more offensively capable unit. So yeah that is Roy and with the added little C in sword rank instead of D we get a pretty nice unit here. Pretty nice lord for this game. Moving on to Har Yegin here. Marcus, Marcus, the famous Marcus. The so first things first in the model, again, the harder, darker lines just make our Marcus look so much better, but the less bright purple for the armor, more tame, more prune is very neat. I really like it. And even his beard, I don't know if it's because of the outline, his beard and hair seem more on the gray side than on the light purple. But I think it's just, again, a case of a little bit darker colors and harder lines just make Marcus look a little bit better. Here, again, there was a modification made to the starting stats. Both start at level one, of course, but he gets plus three in HP. He remains with the same strength, gets an actually a one less in skill, which is quite significant but we'll get to why in a, in a minute. Plus two in speed, making him a little quicker. Same luck, exact same defense, and we increase his resistance by two. His con and movement remain the same. So when looking at Marcus's growths, that's where it's going to be important here because we see that decrease in skill, which is, in my opinion, significant. In Mar Marcus's growth, get a plus 5% in HP, a plus 5% in power, so nothing crazy there, but just makes him a little bit better because Marcus does struggle to stay relevant but where it's a little insane it's the skill growth plus 30 percent i actually made a double take as i was entering these values because i wasn't sure i was like am i making a mistake here i'm not plus 30 percent in skill which explains why they reduced one base skill it's not a lot of reduction but it's a small nerf on the base because he has such a higher growth that he's going to make up for it very hastily very easily he's going to find himself a little bit more of a niche in that way plus five in speed much like they did with strength and hp only plus five plus ten in luck plus five in defense and another very nice one here is a plus 20 in resistance. I can see Marcus kind of becoming a more valuable unit to take on some more of the magic characters in the game in this version. So I think that's kind of very nice to see kind of taking a unit that's usually seen as like kind of very poor because very bad growth in the original game and just kind of twisting him into more of a specialist role. Maybe he's not the best still but he can kind of fill a niche there on your team if you really need it you can come out in a pinch and be useful against certain units also something very significant in the weapon level as you can see the d rank in sword maintains a rank in lance maintains but no more rank in axes that's because they were removed off the paladin and that is because the devs added new classes in this therefore the paladin needs it a lot less for the axes because we're gonna see a, a fan favorite i'd say class in this game in the great knight so i'm very excited to get to those all right now we'll move on to our christmas cavalier starting with Alan. Again, another character that just kind of gets a recolor here, but you know, just colors that feel a little bit more natural. I really like this one too. I mean, I never hated Alan's regular design, but here, it's a nice little upgrade. 
But when looking at Allen, they actually increased his base level from one to three. So they made a few changes from there. And you also get plus five starting bases in HP, plus three in strength with 10 starting. That's actually really good. They also increase his skill by two. His speed also gets a plus two increase. Luck also gets a plus two increase, just plus twos across the board. And plus one increase in defense with the same resistance remaining at zero, but he also gets a plus one in constitution. Alan already had a pretty okay constitution with nine, pretty nice, but gets a 10 starting constitution. That's actually pretty good here. And here you'll see that they really tried to make the Cavaliers even more distinct than they are because Alan's gonna remain the same growth in terms of HP at 85. He's gonna get a plus 15 in strength, which means that he starts at 60% growth, remains the same in skill and speed. They do, however, as a balancing act there, reduce his luck by 5% in terms of growth and increase his defense by 5% and another 5% increase in resistance. So just a little mini nerf on the luck, but he gets such good like increases in other places. And one of the other significant thing here has to do with his weapon level. As you can see, they are switched. He starts with an E in lances and a D in swords. The reason being is that also lance arts of the same in the normal game, E in swords and D in lance. And I think here they truly try to make them distinct, focusing the sword on Alan and the strength on him. And lance is another situation all to himself. So that's why we're going to move on to him right now. All right, so here is Lance and this one, this one is my favorite redesign here. I'm not going to lie, I've always hated the turquoise, super light green look of Lance. I've always just absolutely despised it. Here we get a more, not necessarily foresty green, but you know, just a more natural green, more grass green for his hair. And even his armor just gets a bluish, more tint. It's, it's nicer. It's very much nicer with the gold. It just, it just fits with the gold bands a lot better. I think that was just a, such a great redesign. And even on the side of his head, they redesigned a little bit how his hair folds there and added a little bit of texture. So he looks a little bit better from that front. I like that. And Lance, much like Alan, starts off at level three and he gets a plus four in HP, a little bit less than Alan, but he does get a plus three in strength, which is good. Five strength for a starting Cavalier. Kind of low, but he did start at level one, so it wasn't that bad. He gets a plus one in skill. Skill. He gets a plus three in speed, plus two in luck, plus two in defense, and even a plus two in resistance. He does, however, remain with the same con of nine. So you can start seeing the differences between him and Alan, him having better speed, a little bit less con, Alan having higher con, better strength, and him having a little bit of res, Alan not having res. It's a little bit more apparent, and now they're a little bit more distinct from one another. And even that shows up in the growths. Here you can see they reduce Lance's HP by 5%. They kept his power, his strength to 40%, increased his skill all the way to 60 and his speed to 60. So plus 15 and plus 10 respectively. That's a big, big, big boost in skill and speed, really driving the point home that he's not as bulky, but he's a lot quicker, a lot more skillful, really going towards the spirit of what those Christmas Cavaliers are meant to be, like really doubling down on that. They do, however, reduce his luck by 15% there to kind of balance this out because, you know, if he had luck at 35 on top of that, might have been a little much. Same defense and a five plus in resistance. I think over the board, all over the board, we see an increase generally in resistance because usually that's a huge problem in these games. You don't have good resistance. There's not a lot of magic users, but I think they might have balanced to have more variety in the units later on in the game. But I guess we'll find out when we get there. And as you can see, in terms of sword and lance level, lance remains the same as they flipped it with Alan. Lance remains the same. So they're a little bit, you know, the la guy named Lance has better lance usage. Just kind of makes sense there. A little on the nose, but it makes sense. Next up, we have a Walt. A traditionally regarded, I think, pretty bad character, I would say. It Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I feel like I usually see a lot of disrespect said towards this little archer. But here they do adjust a lot of things, such as his starting level at level four instead of one. They boost his HP by two. They boost his strength by three. His skill by three. Five is speed also by five. That's huge for plus three levels. His luck also by five, defense by two, and his resistance by two. Constitution and movement 
remain the same. But just there, that's just some really good base stat increase. And even looking at his growth, they increase his HP growth from 80 to 90, which to me, that's an interesting one. Giving a high HP growth to an archer feels like an interesting choice, but you know, I'll, we'll roll with it. Plus five in terms of power, plus 15 in terms of skill, plus five in terms of speed and luck and defense and resistance. So it just increases across the board of plus five, except for HP and skill, who gets plus 15 in skill, which is really good. An archer of good skill is always fun, you know, seeing them crit, always a little nice little thing. And his bow level remains the same. But across the board, a little bit better. I, I think that the balance remains kind of equivalent. Just everything got a little bit of an increase. Well, you know, in terms of his growth, might've been just a generally like well-balanced character, character in my opinion, with all everything around the 40s. Now they're a little bit higher, makes him just a little bit more potent. And finally, we have the man himself, Bors. This knight, who I usually do not have a lot of love towards in my playthroughs. Despite his early availability, I never really use him. But here, I might give it a shot. Honestly, I'm going to tell you why. First of all, I don't know why. For the love of me, I was convinced that they really did a big redesign on his armor. But it's literally the same. They just recolored it. And they made the lines darker again. And it looks so much better. But like in a way that I don't know. I can't explain it how I feel like he just looks like such a better looking unit. From just harder black lines and a better yellow. <laughs> it makes no sense. But I was convinced that they did like huge changes to him. I guess his starting portrait isn't bad. It's just like the color scheme they chose wasn't just right and now it's a little bit better anywho let's start talking about this stat boris gets to start at level six instead of one he gets a plus five level base they also increase his hp all the way to 28 at the start they increase his strength by five they increase his skill by six they increase his speed by three his luck by four his defense by one a measly one is res by four constitution stays the same but the big one here is the knight's movement is increased all the way to five so his mobility is going to be a lot better than in the base game which is going to make knights a little bit more fun or you know useful around the map but we can see some huge buffs to him his starting stats are so much better just out the gate six speed versus three is huge he won't double most of the time still because this game has increased levels and stats for the enemies but it still helps maybe him not get doubled and now if we look at the growths, they maintain his HP growth at 90%. They increase his strength by 20 from 30 to 20, which I think is really low for a knight. 30% strength growth. His skill goes up by 15. His speed remains the same at 40%. His luck decreases by 5%. His defense remains the same at 35, which is again, low for a knight. And his resistance is upped by 10. So you can see that they add a little bit of reduction on the luck again. Luck seems to be reduced a little bit across the board. And just, they seem to be balancing a couple of stats that don't make a lot of sense. I get that maybe he's meant to be more speed and luck based knight, but those stats don't really make a lot of sense for that class. So they didn't buff the defense because there's other knights in the game and i guess we'll get to them in due time and we'll see how their stats look and it's going to make more sense but just upping his strength a little bit and his skill to make him a little bit more on par and be able to kind of stay a relevant unit one of the huge thing here is boris has access to sword here in the weapon levels he's at d in sword the reason being they want to give more diversity in attacks to knight and each of them get a different weapon i read so boris gets swords wendy or gwendolyn gets bows and barf gets axes so they're going to be a little bit different than in the base game and it's going to make them a little bit more unique stand out from one another and maybe make all of them useful in their own right but that's it for the unit analysis let's get back to the gameplay so hopefully you guys enjoyed the segment just now with the a little bit more of analysis and looking at the difference between each unit uh let's uh i, I said let's just get started let's go all right so roy as we said has way more movement movement now seven movement so we're gonna have to play around that and the archers something that i want to show you guys is archers have an increased range of one. So every bow is kind of base a long bow. So that's pretty sick. And it's pretty cool. So what we'll do here, we'll use Walt from 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 far away. And oh look at his sprite here. Look even the the fighter sprite looks sick. And we'll do that. And we'll have you come clean up here. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Ooh, look at that little animation, baby. Oh, that looks very neat. Very neat. So, for uh, where the units are placed on the maps and the amounts of units, I know that on certain maps there are differences. Uh, 
I honestly will not be able to tell you in this case uh, if there are any for, for here because there's just too much. There's just too much. Okay, so Walt is behind him. That's what I thought, that these guys wouldn't be able to reach him. There's still this guy, though, that we need to take out. Okay, so... Also, uh, weapon sprites look very different. Even the Vulnery, just a little different. They really did a very good job at, like, graphically, as we just highlighted, even, like, in their in their in their color schemes and just the look of the character like lance looks fat i that's one of like that, that's an upgrade it's a big upgrade even roy doesn't have a lot of differences but the tiny little bit he does are just great i think uh borzo's armor i feel like that's the thing that struck out to me like his armor like just the little detail added to it i feel i feel like there's detail added to it you know it's just great stuff uh but let's go here let's see and damage not great for me what's the difference so this one has an iron axe and this one has a steel axe if i get a hit here that's 23 do you have the same strength okay so this one has one less so that's 10 he did 10 right let's say i get hit i'm down to 28 hp and then the other one would do nine so i'd be down to 28 to 18 minus nine i'd be down to nine hp and your damage is 20, so you'd be fine, and you can't reach. Okay, so Boris can kind of go in to soften him up there. That's actually not a bad idea. If he gets hit, it's not bad, because Roy can come and clean up. That's the goal. Oh, and the dodge. Also, look at that. Like, I just, I blanked there, but that in, like, battle sprite for the night. I have no notes. I have no notes. What a, what a beautiful, beautiful idea. Okay, let's take a look here. We have Roy come and do this. I guess we can just kind of block the. Yeah. Yeah, Roy won't kill with the iron sword. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, look. Let's do this. Let's kill the iron sword here. I have an idea. If we block one of the tiles from which he can get attack, I mean, we can block both technically. No, we can't block both. But if, let's say, we block like here, right? And have Lance here. Then Lance can get attacked twice, which just isn't great. We'll put Marcus here. I won't try to use- I think this is a good position. Curses! Reinforcements already! But they'll go through me to get into the castle! Alright, buddy, I'll go through you. What's his name again? I don't remember that guy's name. Oh, I'll- I'll change a few things. Yeah, so they're gonna attack Roy, because I think the, uh, the AI- I don't think they've made any changes to the AI. Or maybe they have, let me know, but I haven't read anything about changes to the AI. And I think the AI tries to, like, somewhat prioritize your lord, generally speaking. Oh, Alan is going to be strong in this, I think. I feel like Alan's going to be, like, quite decent. Alan and Lance are going to be decent. I'm not, like... I usually, like, end up, like, not using my Christmas Cavaliers that much. But I think I might use them much more in this playthrough. For sure, for sure. Okay, so let's... Be smart about this. Oh, we could give the kill to Wolf. That'd be an easy... He's level 4. I want to give a kill to, to Roy, though. Uh, 15 damage here. It's not that bad. Seven. Okay, so we can, uh, we can play around this. We still have to be careful, though, because we did take a few hits. And these guys are kind of a... I mean, I guess I can... I'll try to use Marcus a little bit. Try to use Marcus a little bit. Not as much. Like, still probably not a big focus on Marcus. But I'll try to give him, like, a chance, you know? Okay, let's, first of all... How much do you do to this guy? You do seven damage. Okay, so we're fine. Let's hit the javelin here. If we hit, 80% chance. Very nice. Oh, that little uh, throwback of the shoulder with a jab. Kind of sexy. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then and then Roy can uh, come and clean. Look at that. Ooh, that is such an upgrade on the armor knight look. Like I like the I like the uh, the usual knight look. Don't get me wrong. I love the night look. Um, but god damn. God damn. This is something else here. Alright, cool. So Roy can get a kill. Which we which, which we like. We like. He's got a lot of movements too. So he can like kind of... He's out of the range of this archer. Great. I can use... Can I do like... How much would I do to the other archer? Wouldn't do that much. That that wouldn't be the best move. I think if I go here, 
Just go, actually, just go here. Iron bow this guy. Kill this guy. Outright. Wolt, do your job. Dude, Wolt looks sick. So far, I have no notes, by the way. Just also, I haven't said anything, but just the general color scheme, color palette on the map itself so far is just so neat. It's Everything is less, like, um, bright and, like, overly bright because that was a problem I thought visually with that game was, like, you know, the GBA, the, the Game Boy Colors, GBA, um, Game Boy Advance, like, era of video games had, like, extreme, like, extremely, like, bright colors and shit. And that was kind of a part of it. That was kind of, like, the point, you know? Um, but I do enjoy... Okay, let's do... Ooh, this guy can do this, though. That was a mistake. I, did, I just did a mistake here. Uh, okay, let's... <laughs> I made a mistake with Marcus. It's not necessarily what I meant to do. Eight damage, okay. Hopefully the uh, axe guy. I I thought I could block the way, but I didn't think about... um. Oh, we hit both of these 66%. That's very nice. Good job, Lines. I wasn't thinking about any of the other stuff that are, are around. I was just kind of like thinking like straightforward. Uh, okay, so Marcus is kind of holding this guy back. That's great for us in a way. He's confining him to that area. Go have you guys come down here. Our HP is kind of looking fragile here. Roy could easily get that kill, but he can still get hit, so that's kind of bad. What about you, Bors? Bors can just take this guy out. Let's do that. Let's do that, because we're going to play it safe. We're going to play it by ear here, because we did take a lot of damage. Very unwanted damage at, at that, but we, we did take the damage. Um, so let's be extra careful. Here, he's on a forest. That kind of blows. But that's a little too much. Nine plus nine. Yeah, I think that's good. Ooh, look at the purple. Okay, just even like all the little movements they added is is just wow. It's just wow, you know. One, two, three, four, five. So you can't walk on the forest because it's five. Cool. Um, and yeah, just iron sword this guy. Just skewer him. Just poke him with the pointy end. Yeah, so far I'm enjoying this. Roy gets a level up. Let's see what we get here. Strength, speed, luck, and defense, and HP. That is a great start. That is a very, very, very good start. I'm happy with this. 10 speed, what's your speed looking like? 11? Your damage looking like? Let me just check real quick. 22, what's your defense looking like? Let's check again, I forgot. Eight. Uh, I would go to 16 if I vulnerary. Uh, eight minus 22, two. Take away the 20, then they have 6, 14. Okay, I'll be fine. Plus the weapon triangle advantage. Look at me trying to math here. Oh, the vulnerabilities way do way more than 10. Okay, that's a that's a new thing. Vulnerabilities do 20, maybe? No, is it 6? 15. It's 15. That's a great plus. Very little addition there. Plus 15 is great. Okay. So we cleared out the first little onslaught. Let's use Marcus to go visit. Let's not put too much XP in Marcus. Are you knights going to the castle? I know this isn't much, but please accept this money on behalf of all of us. Also, look at the background. Use it well. Look at this with the background here. Looks nice. Looks very nice. Oh, I forgot to do something. Nope, not that. Um, game speed. Also, animation with background, please and thank you. Um, yeah, sorry. I, I, I know people like, um, animation in the background. I would the background. I also do like the background, but I just forgot about it. Uh, let's train up our, our, our Cavaliers. So let's give Walt just to, just use Walt to kind of like, uh, chip him down and then have Lance. Have Lance or, yeah, let's have Lance do the kill. Do the honors. I like the look of both Lance. Like, they look kind of distinct in a way, too. I like it. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I, I I did not... Something I always hated about Lance was his 
is um, turquoise, like very intense turquoise air. I was never really a fan of that. Wars, give him your vulnerary because he's going to need it. Start walking up. Use your vulnerary too. Uh, also, the plus five, uh, the plus one movement to um, armor knights. What a change. What a change. You know, it makes them a lot. I think it might make them a little too overtuned, actually. I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll find out in this game. Uh, but Boars did get like a major overall that makes them just. Go to I mean, all these units got like pretty good overalls that make them that make them much better. But Boar Boars is important. I feel. I feel like I, I guess getting high. I guess they just maybe gave them like like they gave them a higher level, but like they also boosted the stats, which helps. But better starting level, better starting stats, the whole nine, you know. Um, yeah, let's have you. We'll slowly chip away at them. Let's give more XP to Lance. I want to see a level up from Lance before we end the video. You know, I'd like to. I'd love to see that. To see also maybe one for Alan, but um, maybe maybe that's wishful thinking a little bit. This spot right here should be safe for him. I will move forward. And let's end the turn. We'll, we'll let them come to us one at a time. And we'll take him out. What a dodge. Nice dodge. 5% chance to, to hit and we dodge. That's, that's, that's Pog. Double hit. So we double now on this guy. I guess it's probably just this guy in particular that we double on. Uh, 11. Okay. That was just about to hit. I was kind of expecting a hit there. But like if he doubles them, if Alan's doubles them like with a steel sword, he one shots. Them. Like he... He one rounds them. He just needs to get a little bit more speed and he's gonna be like, I think actually kind of busted. Uh, let's give that kill to Lance. Let's see a level up from him. Let's see Let's see how our Christmas calves are gonna go. I'm very intrigued. Okay, skill, defense, HP. Okay, level up. I would have liked to see maybe a speed, maybe a strength, but you know, we will not, um, you know, we, we, we won't complain too much. That's That was not a... That was an okay level up. Maybe not the stats you want for Lance, but... I mean, skill is, I guess, is a stat you do want for Lance when you think about it. Uh, let's start moving everybody up then. I know in certain maps, they, uh, they've they added reinforcements. I don't think this one is one of them. But I know that in certain maps, reinforcements have indeed been added. Uh, I will be also, they added a lot of support conversations, which means that I will be, okay, I'll wait for him to come forward. I'll be waiting, um, I'll be uh, waiting before I figure out who I support whom with, simply because I want to know, um, I want to get the perfect promotions, you know? Over here. All right, the archer's coming forward. I think a lot of other units might come forward after. The, this archer still does like four damage to a, I think, 12 defense unit. Kind of insane. Like, like if you think about it, the maniac mode in that way is kind of, kind of crazy. Okay, let's have you hit once for the sake of, of getting him low. And then the other guys will come in and you'll get your XP off of that. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going with that. And on the other hand, we get to kill the kill to Walt. Walt gets finally gets a kill as well. I mean, he did get a couple of kills. I think he got one kill on his own. Anyways, he's still he's pretty good for you know. Maybe we'll still do Lance and um and Alan. I don't think that's a bad promo. I'll keep him back. He's a little like high level, so I don't want to like make him like my like I don't want him to take away XP from like. Roy and stuff like that so I'm being I'm being a little careful with the way I use boars uh, right now because he's since he's has a high level I still want to um, it's kind of the same way as I was use my market okay that's a kill that's awesome kind of the same way you would use Marcus you know lure, lure enemies in more than anything don't try to get final hits as much as we can 
Strength skills. Okay, that's a that's a good one. No speed, but you know what? I'm okay with it. Uh, so the units aren't moving more than like what they need to, which is I guess good for us. Uh, I'll have Roy here. Roy needs more XP. Uh, let's end the turn again. Let's see let's see them come forward. Yeah. There's the units in the back we have to worry about getting hit by that sucks, but it's part of the game I guess. We can kill him next turn, which is nice. Uh, I I need to give XP to Roy. I need to make sure Roy is uh, well taken care of. See, that's a one of those moments where you're like, oh shit, they're coming forward now. Uh, where it makes me go, I'm gonna give this XP to Wolf actually. <laughs> uh, to make sure that Roy can back away and um, and uh, properly um, heal up as the other enemies come in. And we uh, use our forces to take him out next turn. I'll advance him by one. I think that's not a bad idea. Puts him in a better position. Okay, so first off, yeah. And then Roy can come and clean it up. And then the two the two cavaliers can kill the other one. And I'll be able to get a level up on Wolf from just hitting the boss like once. So, uh, yeah, I'll use my rapier here. Avoid damage. Avoid the use of vulnerabilities. We won't have a healer. I think. Wait, when do we get Ellen? Is it next map? Maybe it's next map. Maybe I, I'm worrying too much. Is it Soul you get first? No, I'm pretty sure it's... No, Soul you don't get first. Soul, I guess. Not Soul, Soul. Hmm. Good questions. Uh, bring up his Lance level. Like he, the, the Steel Sword is really good, but... You know, if we can use the Lance, we'll use the Lance. <laughs> bring up a little bit of, of, of Lance levels. Why not? Uh, oh, sheesh. This guy's a lot more defense than I thought. Wait a minute. I have to get the kill the boars. Oh, rip. We'll give the kill the boars then. I'll still get, like, him to attack to get, like, that 10 XP. It's nice to get the extra little XP, but... God damn. Um, I guess not getting that speed level. Wait. Oh, what's your speed? Oh, yeah. I would never have doubled them anyways. What's your defense, actually? Like, I'm... Just five? Okay, I guess just... Lance just has low damage. It's okay, but... And Boris gets a kill finally. Oh, all my big talk of not giving a kill to Boris to end up giving a kill to Boris. Okay, Boris is the man. Look at his hair. Look at his goofy ass haircut. You love to see it. You know, you gotta respect that. You gotta, you gotta respect somebody who's willing to rock that goofy ass haircut. You know. I have nothing but respect to, for someone like that personally. <laughs> Don't know about you guys. Okay, so I can still cheese him with warrants if I want to, but. I want to give the kill to Roy. Give the kill to Roy. Um, but I still want to hit once with Walt for level up purposes. Yeah. Oh, twice. Okay. You bumbling idiots! You can't take down a few pathetic knights. I mean, you know. Okay, dodging 88. Okay, sir, calm down. Dude gets mad because his team can't dodge. You know, highly trained and skilled knights who have uh, spent their entire. Okay. HP, strength, and luck. Nice. We spend their entire life working away at, at becoming um, their craft. Man gets mad at them, you know, buddy. I think you gotta, I, I think you gotta recalibrate your the way you see life. A few pathetic knights. They're still knights. You're you're just a bandit with no training. You gotta. I think I think you gotta slow the brakes on the judgment here. We'll enemy face um, just in case. In case that happens. No crits. That's unfortunate. Uh, okay. So, we'll just pepper arrows on him. How much HP does he have left? Nine? Can Roy kill? Question mark? Can't. I didn't say anything. Uh, wait a minute. You have a good strength. You give me like, just give me four damage. Give it to me. Or don't. Yeah, it's a little more. Eh. Guess I gotta chip them away a little bit more. In the turn. Okay, let's try to do, cause Walt's gonna kill. And I really wanna give it to Roy. Let's try again with the plants. He's at eight now. Okay, I think that we get the kill. I think that's a for sure, for sure. 
I should not use the Vulnery. That was a mistake. That's fine. Yeah, that's a for sure, for sure kill. Let's go. Awesome. Awesome. And we killed Damas. It's so, so strong. Yeah, yep. Piece of shit. All right, level three. Skill, defense, HP. You know what? That's all right. We'll take it. If I get more than two, I'm happy. If I get more than two level ups, I'm happy. I'll, I, I will not complain at three, three stat level ups. You know, they're okay. And we get to season and end our first map. Let's go. Father, Lilina. Roy, is that you? Roy, I'm so glad to see you both. Thanks, God. Godness, you're unarmed. Thanks for the rescue, Roy. Of course, Father, how is your health? Well enough, I've some life left in me yet. But Roy, do you know why I called you back here? I'm here to take over your role by leading the soldiers of Pharaoh. You must join for the rest of the Lycian army to defend our people. Exactly. As you know, Burton has commenced an invasion of Lycia. Uh, Lycia, Lycia. Lycia needs our every lord's army and we must apply. Of course. I'm truly sorry to interrupt your studies and force you into, into this war. But I'm not well. I'm no, no condition to I'm in no condition to lead an army. Father. Lord Aywood, I'll go with Roy. My father leads Lyc Lycia's large... I think it's Lycia. I think it's Lycia's large army. And I'm cer certain my magic will be a, of help to Roy. No, Luna, you must return to Ostia. Why? With Ector preparing for battle, there is no one sitting on the throne of Ostia. It must be an uneasy feeling for the people not to have a sitting lord. As the daughter of the Marquis, you must take the throne if Ector returns. That will put the people at ease. Do you have any objections? No, my lord. Roy, I have arranged a contract for a group of mercenaries. You're going to meet them at the border of Burn. Merlin will accompany you. He is knowledgeable and experienced and should be of great help. Thank you for everything, father. Don't worry, my son. I have absolute faith in you. If I bravely and show everyone who the next Marquis of Farah is. Yes, father. Boris, I have a favor to ask of you. You need to ask him, my lady. I will accompany Lord Roy in his travels and protect him with my very life. Thank you, Boris. What an honorable man. Take care, Roy. I will. You too, Lilina. And that's it for the map. Thank you all for watching. That's going to be it for the first episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our first episode of Project Ember. I had a lot of fun playing it. Very beautiful so far. And I can't wait to get more. Let me know if you guys are planning to play along down in the comments down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, I love you all very much. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your week. And I'll catch you guys in the next one next Thursday. Bye-bye.